So I telephone Coyote and she enthusiastically welcomes me to take refuge from the storm at her apartment in Detroit. Mm -hmm. When I arrive at her apartment, I am pleasantly impressed how young and cute she is. What's in the fridge? A kilo brick of marijuana from Berkeley, California. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like millions of us hippies at the time, small time drug dealer to uh, you know, keep her stash going on. I smile mischievously as I witness chunks of hashish and LSD tabs scattered casually around her place. Well, my stories about India and the Tibetans blow her away. Within hours, we are stoned and making love. Yeah. I show her some yoga asanas and teach her how to meditate. Mm. Uh, Carol uh, Coyote um, takes me to her friend's house, William, an expert in draft resistance. Mm -hmm. William suggests I mutilate my body. Sounds way too serious. But I eventually agree to have William puncture my upper and lower lip <laughs> with gold wire <clears throat> so that I can make crude rings in my upper and lower lip to try to freak out <laughs> the military examiners. You know, I still have the scars of these. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Put a potato in my mouth and... <laughs> 30 years ahead of my time body piercing mm -hmm. well I have these crude gold rings in my lips I'm wearing my burgundy full length Tibetan robe mm -hmm. head shaved eyebrow shaved oh I noticed if you shave your eyebrows your ears really stand out you know Little Dumbo the elephant ears. You know, your eyes go right to the oh, ears. Huh? Look rather Martian. Yeah. Uh, all dressed up, yeah. Uh, but eventually, you know, this exaggerated makeover proves less effective than my truthfulness and inner calm. Mm -hmm. Courtroom, downtown Detroit huge must be 200 family and friends endless rows of seats facing the judge's bench uniform guards american flags abound <sighs> oh yeah i don't feel anxious about anything at all as far as i'm concerned everybody present is an ally they're all playing their roles in helping me to get to my Ganesh cave. Well, my apparently a court-appointed attorney explains to Judge Freeman my situation. He looks tired, Judge Freeman. Hundreds of men have come before him with the exact same trip. Hell no. We won't go. Mm. Courtrooms across the nation clogged with young men resisting the Vietnam War. <sighs> Thousands fleeing to Canada. Many mutilating themselves. Judge Freeman parouses my paperwork, sighs. Report back here in six weeks for another hearing. 
You remain, uh, shall remain in the custody of your father. Sign my court order and you are free to walk out. He slams down the gavel. Next. Mm. 